You see a hand waving in the darkness. <laughs> AJ, can you explain, um, Mary has a reference to the, um, the love that the apostles received at Pentecost. Can you explain what that actually is about? Well, it's very similar to what I described with Peter when he asked his questions earlier. What happened, what happened for a period of time after my death was that most of the so-called disciples and apostles, which I don't think of them as that and neither does Mary, we just think of them as our friends and acquaintances, <laughs> and most of them were in a state of deep grief about my passing. For, for many reasons, not, be, not just because they felt a love for me um, or anything like that, but because they felt that a lot of the things that I'd taught them was at, were actually false because I died and they didn't expect me to die. And so they went through huge amounts of grief and they processed huge emotions with God and huge emotions about trusting myself and then huge emotions about the truth that I taught. And as they went through all of this grief, their condition lightened. And as their condition lightened, they got closer and closer and into a place of stronger faith. And because they got into a space of stronger faith, now what could happen is the celestial spirits by this stage, who were now at one with God too, because there were many, could now influence those people in a much more positive way. And God's love could flow into them directly. And as a result of that, many of the celestial spirits could actually speak through them. To the, to the rest of the people there in the language that the people were listening. So there was a time when Peter got up in front of 3,000 Greeks and Peter couldn't even speak it right, at the time. He, he learnt to speak it after, over time, but at that moment he couldn't speak that language and yet he spoke the language exactly that, that, that they needed to hear about the divine truth. So he spoke in tongues, but it was in the tongue of the people who were the audience who needed to hear the truth. And, and that was just a demonstration that they had received enough love for these major changes to take place. Now, already for many of you, changes are taking place. Some of you who have never been, had, a, had a gift of mediumship now have one. Some of you who have never felt the, a power of healing but except through others now can start feeling a connection with God through healing. Some of you are already starting to experience that. Many of you don't talk about it yet, but you're already starting to experience it. And, and as it grows, and when you get into this condition eventually of atonement, you'll be able to do these things all the time. So what happened in the first century was, yes, there was this heavy spirit influence after my passing of love, divine love spirits, the spirits on the divine love path in the celestial realms, who entered the celestial realms in the three years of my ministry, and they actually, including myself, projected all of these feelings and all of this truth to the group of people who were in the upper room at Pentecost and because of their desire for God and their longing for God and the fact that they'd had just had 50 days of crying their eyes out, <laughs> they could connect with that and actually experience divine love flowing into them, for many of them the first time, and that had a fantastic ex 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 um, effect on everyone around them. You see, what many of us don't realise is the only way that this truth will grow on this planet is for each of us to embrace it. That's the only way it grows. Because when we make the child changes inside of ourselves, now the other persons who are ready to listen to truth but need somebody to teach them have a teacher. You see, all we need to do is get the teachers ready and the world is full of people desiring truth, many more than what is here in this audience, and when the teachers are ready, more people can come. And, and that's exactly what happened in the first century. And they had spent three and a half years with me listening, as some of you have now spent three years listening, have you not? Who's had three years or so? So there's a few in the audience who had three years listening. So they spent three, they, so they knew me for the amount of time you've known me. And they've had that amount of time listening and then and then, because of my death, feel all these different emotions, then feel the truth of it, and then as the divine love comes and enters them, now they're in a state where they're ready to be given these gifts from celestial spirits to help the momentum. And, and God has historically given different gifts to the planet based on the momentum. Remember I said, and you would have heard this quote perhaps, that if, if I can't speak, the stones will speak out. 
So in the end, God has a plan to have the divine truth come to this planet. And it began, that plan began many, many years before I arrived in the first century. And you and I are a part of this plan. But we have to embrace it. We have to embrace it. God doesn't cause you to be a part of the plan without your will being involved. Your will must be involved. So when you exercise your will to avoid your emotions and avoid changing your, your, the belief systems you have and avoid changing your, uh, your, your acceptance of truth and, and all of those things, you are exercising your will and all it's doing is actually keeping you away from being a part of this greater plan that God has. And when you turn that around and when you say, oh no, oh, what I'm going to do instead of that is I'm going to connect to God connect to her in truth. I'm going to work through my emotions, work through my beliefs, work through my morals, work and do all of these things, not for anyone else, not for AJ, the world or anybody else. You do it because of you and have, you're having a desire for love and primarily your desire and passion for God inside of you. And when you do that and actually do it rather than just talk about it, what happens is everyone around you will feel it. Some will be angry, some will be upset, some will be happy, but everyone will feel it. And as they feel it, the people who want truth in their lives will be attracted to it. And that's the beauty of you exercising faith now. Because, see, the people who exercise the faith on the flimsiest of excuses are the ones that have the most longest-term benefit. If you, if you watched me in the first century and one day you'll be able to see pictures of all of your lives including my, and my own and all of it and so you'll be able to see what happened in the first century. If you watched a picture of me looking at a little, at a little bug on my hand and connecting that to God, right, that was pretty much the flimsy of, flimsiest of excuses for me to connect to God if you think about it right, in terms of the judgement of everyone around me. But my desire and passion started growing from those moments, just like yours can. And when the end we get to the stage where now we've got, we're in this state where we have so much faith that we, and our faith is, is supported by the evidence, supported by the proof. And when, when we're in this state of having so much faith, we can from that moment on progress so rapidly and help so many other people progress as well just by exercising that faith. And we don't even need to be at one with God yet to prove the existence of God's love, to prove the existence that, that God actually exists, to prove the truth. We don't even need that yet because, because we're in this state where we're feeling it inside of ourselves as a truth and we're acting upon it without fear.